Ahoy guys, it's Mr. Creighton. What's new? It's Mrs. Klein. Alright, so we're here with your second podcast in our unit. Chapter 7, Lesson 2, Vance's Under the Tang and Song. In this lesson, you will learn about political, economic, cultural, and technological advances made under the Tang and Song dynasty. Just a reminder guys, you're going to have a podcast quiz tomorrow, and there are some important terms and names you need to know. Imperial, bureaucracy, scholar official, woodblock printing, movable type, and porcelain. And when you hear this sound, you know you've heard a vocabulary term. Just like always, you guys, we got a big idea on essential questions. The big idea for this unit is rulers have a great impact on their society and leave lasting impressions. First essential question, how do belief systems influence a people's way of life? The second essential question, how do rulers shape present and future civilizations? And the last essential question for our unit on China is how are lasting effects of rulers reflected in a society? All right, the first section in our chapter is, you're gonna find on pages 223 and 224 in your history book, it's called Building the Imperial State. Okay, uh, question you, I would like for you to be thinking about too is this, how was the Chinese government organized under the Tang and Song dynasties? So ruling a large country like China was difficult. To govern better, the Tang rulers developed an imperial state. Imperial means related to an empire. The Tang realized that the Sui had had a well-run government. Because of this, the Tang based much of their government and military organization on Sui models. The Tang also used the Sui tax system. The Tang government was like a pyramid. An emperor ruled at the top. The emperor's chief advisor served him directly. They were the second highest level of the pyramid. Below those advisors was the bureaucracy a system of departments and agencies that runs the government. And you know what? That's not the first time we've heard bureaucracy this year, right, Mr. Creighton? Not at all. Okay, well, you know it's a very kind of effective way in order to be able to rule a very large territory. It is. All right, so each department or agency was in charge of a certain area, such as taxes or the army. Local governments throughout China had to report to this central bureaucracy. Tang rulers created a new code of law. This new code proved highly effective. China used it from about 624 until the late 1200s. For many government jobs, people had to take an exam. The state exam tested knowledge of Confucian ideas, poetry, and other subjects. Most people who took the exam failed. Just like ours. Yeah. A person who passed the state exam could become a scholar official, an educated person with a government position. Almost all scholar officials came from the upper class. Only rich people could afford the education needed to pass the test. After the Tang, the Song Dynasty ruled from 960 to 1279. The Song tried to improve the exam system. It set up more schools, and as a result, more people passed the test and got government jobs. Even so, most officials came from rich families with political influence. All right, you should be able to answer this one. What were the features of the Chinese government during the Tang and Song Dynasties? Our next section is prosperity from trade and farming. You guys can find this in the textbook on pages 225 to 227, the question we want you guys to be thinking about, on what was China's economy based during the Tang and Song periods? Under Tang and Song rule, China's economy grew. China became the wealthiest nation in the world. An improved transportation system contributed to this growth. The Tang and Song government built many roads and waterways. Better transportation improved trade and communication. Trade was also improved by several technological developments. The development of gigantic ships made sea voyages faster and safer. The magnetic compass also improved travel on the open seas. Around AD 1000, Chinese farmers began planting a new type of rice that farmers could harvest more, fre more frequently each year. Soon the food supply expanded. This allowed the population to grow to 100 million. You got enough food to feed people, then you're gonna end up having more people. Yep. Okay, soon the people in Southern China had more rice than they needed. Having extra food meant that fewer people needed to work as farmers. As a result, more people could work in trade. The growth of trade led to a rapid increase in the use of money. The large numbers of coins were heavy and difficult to carry. To solve this problem, Tang and Song governments began to print paper money. They were the first governments in history to do so. Dang, that's pretty impressive. That is. All right, as trade increased, more people became merchants. China's merchants lived mostly in cities and towns, where most trade took place the cities grew and prospered. 
Okay, so answer this question right now for you, Brett, you guys. What brought about the change to a money economy during China's Tang and Song dynasties? All right, our last section of this podcast is a time of brilliant achievements. You can find this on pages 227 to 229. The question we want you guys to be thinking about, what technological advances were made under the Tang and Song dynasties? Poetry and art thrived during the Tang and Song dynasties. Three Tang writers are considered among the greatest Chinese poets of all time. They are Li Bei, Du Fu, and Wang Wei. Tang artists produced beautiful poetry figurines. During Song times, landscape painting became an important art form. Right, so you guys should be thinking, like, once a government is successful and they've got money, then it seems to me like it's at that time that the arts also kind of explode. So you have poets, you have people who are, you know, making beautiful pottery and you're doing landscape painting and other kinds of art forms. When you got the money to do it, people are, they occupy themselves with those particular forms. Yeah. All right, the Chinese developed methods to manufacture paper in large quantities. The Chinese also invented wood block printing. Printers carved wooden blocks to print entire pages. Later, printers created movable type. The Chinese used paper and printing to make the first printed books. Chinese technology shaped history in many different ways. Paper making spread, to, spread west to Europe in the mid-1100s. The Chinese invented gunpowder, which they used for fireworks. Later, gunpowder changed warfare. It made deadly new weapons possible. The magnetic compass also spread to Europe. Compasses made the European age of exploration possible. The Chinese influenced daily life by, ex by exporting porcelain, a hard white ceramic, and tea to the world. Okay, what were some key Chinese inventions or products that influenced the world, you guys? You should be able to answer that after listening to that section. All right, just a reminder, you have a podcast quiz coming up pretty quickly, probably tomorrow. And here are the important, important terms and names you need to know. Imperial, bureaucracy, scholar official, Woodblock printing, movable type, and porcelain. So long, suckers. All right, night all.